Thank you, Lord, for speaking so loudly through that song, Lord. Mm. Thank you, Lord, that you're filling us with passion. And Lord, let us all, I pray right now that all of New Hope would just say, Lord, fill me with passion for you and for others. Lord, we want to relinquish our selfishness, our pride. Even sometimes we need to relinquish our dignity. We have dignity because of you, Lord, not dignity because of who we are, what we have accomplished, or where we've been, or what we can tell others. Thank you for these quiet times, quiet times, quiet times, that we can just listen and say yes. Doesn't have to be a big discussion, church. <laughs> Just listen and say yes in Jesus' name. Amen. That's what I did. I just said yes. I was over there worshiping, and I forgot I was speaking next, so I had to remind myself and get up. But boy, God is so powerful in communicating. I'm so glad to see you, Michelle. What a blessing you are to so many people. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, that's really good. I'm... Hello, everybody. There you are. Right there. <laughs> yeah. I'm so glad to see you guys. You know, the Lord's going to have a huge year for you. You know that? I see you like a, a, a pulling. Oh, I got to stay over here because everybody at home doesn't see me. I'm always told that, so. So here I am, looking this way. I just saw you like a pulling guard going out and blocking for the tailback. Not a lot of glory, not a lot of dignity there. Just make sure you block them and let them get outside so they can make the touchdown. And I see you doing that with a lot of people. You've had your challenges, your trials, You've had your difficulties. You've had your suffering, 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 suffering. And yet I just see this year as a year that you're actually going to accomplish. You're going to see stuff. A lot of what's been happening has been down here. But now you're going to begin to see some things. I just want to encourage you, Jason, that God's going to do a big work in your life. I just have missed seeing you guys. I'm, I hope you're healthy and whole and everything's good. But thanks for showing up today. It's really good. You're welcome. We're in a battle. Sam already preached my first message. There's only two messages I'm preaching today. One about being prepared for battle. Good to see you, Maria. You're doing your hair different. <laughs> it's really nice that everybody notices. Can we just all stand up and turn to your neighbor and tell them why you're thankful for them? Just tell them why you're thankful. I'm thankful, Linda, that you're here. I'm thankful to be here. And I'm thankful that you made the drive today. Me too. Yeah. It's good to be thankful. Yeah. I'm thankful for you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, that was fun. We just did something biblical, Zalo. <laughs> it says, give thanks. And so we're so thankful for each other. We tend to focus on the negative things. Is that Natasha? Yeah. Natasha, what are you doing here? Huh? You were cold? <laughs> I saw your picture with Gabe in Reading. Yeah. Wow, what a treat. We have Linda here today for the first time. She's from uh, Haiku. Anybody from Haiku? Yeah, we got a few. 
Everybody wave and say hello. And I met, who did I meet? Was it, I'm supposed to have a good memory. Hannah, was it, not Hannah. No, it wasn't Hannah. So I'll just think about it a while and get back with you soon. Today, I want to read some scriptures, and I would like for you, when you see them come up on the screen, it just look at them and meditate on them and allow God to speak to you through these scriptures. Oftentimes, we want to have someone explain everything to us. I believe this is a year that God has called us to battle, and that was what Sam was talking about. I believe this is a year that we're going to have a lot of shaking. I've already shared that multiple times in the last weeks to come. I don't, when I say shaking, it's going to be more shaking than you probably want or you desire, but there is going to be some shaking coming on. If you want to know what I really think, just come talk to me sometime or call me on the phone and I'll let you know in detail. But I, and maybe sometimes I'll share some parts of what I'm sensing and what I'm feeling. And, um, but anyway, just ask me. But what's happening today, uh, the depression rate usually is about 8.7% of the people. One in 20, one guy says, another one says one in five people are depressed. So if we look around the room, we can calculate how many people could be depressed. But you could actually have 15 in this room because the statistics might mean somewhere else they're not as depressed. But depression continues to grow and increase. Suicide, most of you have already heard, is increasing. Uh, and young people, thank God, it hasn't increased in numbers, it's incre but it has increased in attempts. There's more attempts from the young people by about 30% that has increased. They're, they're trying to, and most of the time they like to shoot themselves. But they're not dying, they're just trying. But that means people are hurt, people need life, people need love, people need caring. And we just have to spend more, as Tanya told me the other day, that we need more quiet time. We need more quiet time with the Lord listening. And I agree a thousand percent, we need quiet time. And who knows who he may put in your mind to call, to text, to encourage, to say something nice, or just... I'm really into this now. Let's just give, I want to give thanks for you, or I want to give thanks for what you're doing. I want to give thanks for what you're not doing, because I know you will do more soon. But let's just read this passage, Psalms 144.3, 1 through 3. This is David, who had enemies all surrounding him, and sometimes we feel that we have enemies of our soul, of our mind, of our will, of our intellect, of our emotions. We have enemies that are coming against us we don't understand. We don't feel good. We don't think well. There's brain fog. I just break off brain frog in Jesus' name. Brain frogs? Is that what I said? I'm not sure. Yeah, get rid of the brain frogs, Lord, and get rid of the brain fog so we can think clearly. So Psalms 144, just look at it as I read it slowly. Praise be to the Lord, my rock. Doesn't that sound good? The Lord, my rock. He's solid. He's secure. He's a rock. He's a foundation. Who trains my hand for war? I'm thinking about that. Did David go out and do a little judo with his hands? I, I, sorry, that's just the way I think sometimes. But then it says, my finger is for battle. I say, what are you going to do, tickle people? You know, to death? No, I don't think so. Then I thought, in today's world, we can use our fingers to have a drone just throw a bomb over here. And then I said, maybe he was being prophetic for this time. He is my loving God and my fortress. Loving God, loving God, loving God, and my fortress where we can run into for safety. My stronghold. Now, the enemy has strongholds in our life that we want to get rid of. But we want the stronghold that God is to us to encompass us and surround us and make us feel safe. I just seem to have the verbato today, feel safe, feel safe, feel safe. Some of you really need to feel safe. My shield in whom I take refuge. Do you take refuge in God 
Or do you plan on it, but it never happens? God is asking us to spend time with him and take refuge. If you're going to take refuge, you might as well spend a little time talking with him. That would be fun. And what I, last part, some of you might say, what does that mean? Who subdues people under me. So if you look up the word subdue, that means he is going to emotionally and physically put people under you so you don't have to be contentious with them, but he takes care of the situation because you chose to come to him rather than trying to straighten these people out yourself. How does that work when you try to straighten people out? How does that work? Doesn't work, does it, Barrett? There's three things often in life that we're, we're choosing to do and trying to be. We're trying to, number one, impress people by what we are, what we do, what we've accomplished. Number two, I said this three weeks ago, so it's just a reminder. I told Jack last week, and I can only remember two out of the three, so I just want to make sure he knew I knew all three. I didn't forget them. Number two, we become people pleasers. We try to please people for them to like us, to care for us, and do things for us. And then it, if we can't please them by being people pleasers, we try to control them. And if we can control them, we think that we've accomplished their attention or their, what, they, what you're looking for from those people. But I'm encouraging that none of those really work. What works is spending time with God and let him subdue the people by faith, and it's fun to watch him do this. Now, I have some thoughts about God's will. And so, this message is about us doing God's will. Number one, God's will is to teach us how to battle with his word. We have the sword of the spirit, but if we don't read it, it's probably not doing any good. We can bang him on the head, and it'll hurt. But I think it's better to have God's word hidden in our heart, especially all you young ones like Linda and, and like Frank and, and like myself. And we're, we're young, you know, and we need God's word. And because I hid God's word in my heart at a young age, it's amazing how it just comes out in comfort. It comes out in instruction. It comes out all the time because God's word is hidden in my heart. And since 19, I've read the Bible through every year, but the last 15 years, I got a little more radical. I read the New Testament twice, and I read the Old Testament once. And I have no pressure, and no one has to make me do it. I don't get up and go, oh, no, I got to read the Bible, get my list done. No. I just love being in God's Word in His treasure chest because I need to be reminded. Turn to your neighbor and tell them they need to be reminded. So he's teaching us how to battle using his word. The Holy Spirit is available for us to learn new strategies. Now, some people say Einstein said this, and some people claim they said this, but what's the definition of, does anybody remember what Einstein said? What? What's that? Say it again. Yes, doing the same thing over, over again and expecting a different result. But some of you might be stuck, so you can pray for your neighbor, Lord, unstuck them. That's not how you say it. <laughs> Unstick them so they can't be stuck in Jesus' name. God was David's power source through worship and prayer. Once again, we've already learned that one antidote to depression is to sing. But of course, most people who are depressed don't want to sing. So some of you need to go over and sing with them and to them so they can have songs in their heart so they can walk out of their depression. The Lord's presence was his source of joy and strength. David spent time on a harp for Saul and for others. And you know he had quiet time during that time. What was he thinking about? And the last thing is the Lord is training us all to see the breakthrough which is coming. He's not just wanting prophets to be the visionaries. He's wanting you 
to have a vision of who he is and what he is and what he wants to do. In Jesus' name. Then, some other thoughts. God is prepping us. What's he prepping you to do? So these are questions you can have. These, this is a homework assignment. What do you mean? I don't want to have homework in church. It's okay. Here's homework for you because the Lord wants you to change and not do the same thing over and over again. Number one, are you becoming whole? Or are you going to still make excuses why you can't become whole in these areas in our life? Number two, do you know what God has in mind for you for 22? Well, Jason knows a little bit more now. <laughs> But do all of you know, and if you don't know, ask someone to pray for you that pro pro promise you they'll prophesy over you and they'll begin to give you some things to think about. Do you know what God has in mind for you? Or are you just going to go to the end of the year and go, I escaped another tough year? Number three, did you know that God really needs you? Did you know God needs you? He chose you. If you have accepted Jesus Christ into your heart, he destined you to be chosen by him to do his works and do his calling and make a difference in your world. And stop focusing on yourself. Begin to focus on how you can make a difference in others. You know, one easy way is just bringing people joy. Say things that bring joy. Do things that bring joy. Bring surprises. Think of people that you can encourage. Number four, I think. Do you see what God is trying to do for you? Or what are you seeing that's blocking? Number five, will you start thanking God for more things? See, God is prepping us for battle with some practical things that can take place. Number six, have you come to a place, this is a big one, have you come to a place where Jesus completely satisfy you and nothing else will do? Because if you get become that radical toward Jesus that nothing else will supply your needs, then you'll stop doing a lot of the, can I say the word stupid? stupid things that you're doing that show me that you don't see Jesus as 100% completing you. Everybody thinks, well, if so-and-so do this, I'll be complete. You can't be complete except through with Jesus, and then it's up to him. Just food for thought. Where are we going to go next, you think? A scripture. We can't go wrong with the scripture, can we? This is a scripture of sonship. In the Bible, in the Roman time, when you wanted to adopt someone, you had to go through a ceremony with the magistrate. And you brought the scales and you brought the copper coins. So if someone wanted their son to be adopted by another man or woman or family, they had to go through this situation. They had to go, had the scales, and I'm not sure what the scales for, weigh the boy, I don't know. Weigh the coins? All I know is they had scales and they had coins. And they, the, the man who was gonna allow the other man to adopt it, this man gave him the coins and then the man gave the coins back. And then the second time, the man gave the coins, and then the man gave the coins back. And the third time, they gave the coins, and he didn't give the coins back, and the son became adopted by this other family. When that happened the third time, they had to go to the magistrate and seal that situation. And then at that point, there was nothing that was obligated or due the son to that family any longer. They were now under the adopt, they were adopted by this family, this man, this woman. Now, why is that important? 
It's important because we didn't have to do all of this. When we became cho chosen and adopted by God, Ezra and I talked a little bit about that. We have to talk more last Sunday. But we're adopted. And we don't have, we don't have no responsibility to our old father, to our old dad. And you know who our old dad was before Jesus adopted us? Does anybody know? Who? Diablo. See, we did Diablo. The devil. Does anybody know that? Does anybody know that your father was the devil? You don't have to take on any of his attributes any longer. You're, you're completely adopted as a son and daughter of God. You don't have any more attributes. You have no more responsibilities. As, as Jack talked about generational stuff that God just, boom, took away, took out of his life last week. And by the way, in case you were confused or anything about demons coming out, demons, we all are demonized by the devil. That doesn't mean we're possessed. It means we're being oppressed. And so what, when we say demons are, we can say out and off, that means they're coming out of our existence, they're coming out. But we don't believe that Christians can have demons. Some of you may, but I'm not saying all of you do. But I just want to make sure you can't have in the same temple, the same house, a devil and God. You're adopted into his life and love. Where am I at? Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. What do you see there? He blessed us. He's still blessing us. Number two, this is verse four. That was verse three, sorry. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight in love. He chose us. He blessed us. He's chosen us to be his, the creation of the world, since to be holy and blameless. How are we doing with the holy and blameless thing? Try it in your own strength and you'll fail every time. Spend time with him and be in his presence and you'll be successful all the time. The, the fifth verse of Ephesians he predestined us to be adopted as his sons through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and his will. It's pleasing. It's his will that you were adopted into this family. And you don't have to deal with the past any longer because you're adopted. You're forever his. And the fourth scripture, verse 6, to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given to us in the one he loves. He's making us. So we see here four things. He blessed us. He chose us. He predestinated us to be his sons and daughters. And now he's making us to be one with him and to be like him. Aren't you glad? I'm glad. Whether you are or not, I'm glad. And here's what David said, same thing, same situation. And some of you may say, well, if I'm his son and daughter, why am I going through this hell? Why am I going through all this suffering? And I'm sure David thought about it quite often, but because he was a worshiper, he didn't care. He just went out and worshiped and danced before the Lord. And the Lord ministered to him. But here's how, here's how he felt. Have you ever felt like this? I'm sure you have. I cry to you, O Lord, but when I cry, I say, you're my refuge. You're my portion in the land of the living. Some of us are living in the land of the dead, dead <laughs> and the dead thinking and the dead thoughts, and yet God wants us to live in the land of the living. Listen to my cry, for I am in a little bit of need. No, he's in desperate need. Desperate need. 
Rescue me from those who pursue me, for they're too strong for me. He's already made up his mind the things that are trying to destroy him. They're, they're, the people who are destroying are coming after him. The enemy is sending, we're fighting a different battle than David fought. We have psychological warfare. We have emotional warfare. We have misinformation. We have lies after lies after lies where we don't know the truth. I read, I read a story about in Germany, they had the big speakers and they came on and said the things over and over and over again so everybody would believe them. And yet the only thing I want to believe is what God says in his word. And I want to check everything else by his word. And if it falls short, if it's talking about killing babies, I think we'll find that falls short of what the word says about that. I don't care how you feel, what you think, or friends that you have that have difficulties with that. This is what God's word says, and we want to align ourselves fully so we can be in the living instead of that which is temporal and dead. The last verse, seven, says, set me free from my prison. Now, I'm going to ask a question. Don't raise your hand. How many of you feel like you are in prison some way? Some, don't raise your hand. Just think about it and say, yeah, why am I thinking that I'm in prison? Why would I want to do that? I'm a son. I'm adopted. He blessed me. He predestinated me. He chose me. Why am I? He doesn't want a son in prison. He wants a son that's been set free. That I may praise your name. Then the righteous will gather about me because of your goodness to me. So why was this child blind? Because of sin? He says, no, so that the glory of God would be revealed. Much of what we've gone through is to show that the glory of God is going to be revealed to you, and you can share that with others who are going through a similar situation. So, what do we need to do? Next slide. I mentioned this two weeks ago or three weeks when I was speaking. I gave you some ideas of how to function, how to make that work. Here's six more things I want to share about how you renew your mind. First thing is you remember you're a son that you're adopted. And you don't have to have those attributes from the old family. But we renew your, our minds by understanding our identity. What do you believe about yourself? Start believing, I'm a son, I'm a daughter. I'm free to live for Jesus and allow him to feel, feel my every, be, my, all my being in Jesus' name. What you believe about yourself influences your level of maturity, peace, and mental and emotional health. And if you believe the lies, if you believe what's coming at you, and don't stand and resist it, then it'll continue to take over your identity. Number two, we already said it, we need constant repentance, morning, noon, and night. You get to repent daily by forgiving and not hanging on to the secrets of the past. Many of you still have secrets that need to be confessed so the Lord can set you free from that generational curse from whatever is there. Number three is breaking family sin patterns. Daily breaking free of the pull of the generational curses, whether it be your mom controlling you. You said, I'll never be like my mom. You, you, you gave a, a word vow there. And then now, you gotta, now you're controlling everything. And you wonder what's happening. You've got to go back to the Lord and say, Lord, break that generational curse. I don't want to control. I want you to control. Number four, forgiving others. We need to forgive those who hurt us. Anybody ever heard that before? <laughs> but that's a daily thing. People are always hurting us. They're saying things we don't like. There's things we disagree with. We need to be more authentic and real and say, you know what? That really hurts me. That really bothers me. Would you receive my forgiveness? And they're going to say, well, yeah, if that's what you need. That's what you want. Number five is healing hurts. 
bringing to the surface the unprocessed wounds that are in your life. That's what happens. God, you're standing time spending with him, and he says, well, what about that? Oh, man, never thought about that. Well, what about that? Oh, I never thought about that. And you just bring them up and hand them to him. You don't have to do any long therapy session. I'm not against therapy. Most of you don't know it, but I'm a therapist. <laughs> You're a therapist? What do you mean? Well, I went to school and got my degree, my master's in psychology. So I was a therapist for years. Now I'm a, uh, what am I now? I'm a person who loves people and want to help them with their situations. How's that? We do prayer counseling. It's really a lot more fun. Number, oh, I actually enjoyed therapy and counseling too, so I can't say anything. Lord, forgive me for anything I said in Jesus' name. Amen. Number six, overcoming fears is huge, and we have so many fears. There's a list too long to even name, but fears have to go if we're going to be spiritually and emotionally healthy, and so I would think 2022 would be a good year to list all the fears you have and then sit down with him and let him tell you how he wants to help you overcome those different types of fears. Fears can be anxiety, it can be worry, it can be doubt, it can be unbelief, it can be all these cluster of things that hang together in Jesus' name. So let's go back to a scripture reminding us of who we are. If you want your mind renewed, there's some information for you. If you want your mind, your, your mind renewed, we want to look at 1 Peter and be reminded. To God's elect, by the way, that's you, Turn to your neighbor and say, that's you. To God's elect, strangers in the world. That's the question. Are you a stranger in the world or do you fit right in? The answer is no, I don't fit in. I'm a stranger. I'm going after eternal values. The rest of the world is going after temporal that seem to be good for a time, but then fall away. To God's elect, strangers in the world. Scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, Bithynia, who have never been, who have been chosen according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through the sanctifying work of the Spirit for obedience to Jesus Christ and sprinkling by his blood, grace and peace be yours in abundance. I just got to have you practice that. Just turn to your neighbor and say, grace and peace be yours in abundance. Grace and peace be yours in abundance. Grace and peace be yours in abundance in Jesus' name. Woo -hoo. Isn't it nice to quote the scriptures to one another? But sometimes we want to quote the scriptures and go, you know, stick your finger in their face. This isn't sticking your finger. This is saying, grace and peace be yours in abundance. But you're God's elect. Can you get that? Say that with me. I am God's elect. Say it with me. I am God's elect. He elected us. He chose us to be his sons and daughters. We're in his family. We're adopted into his family, not to be pulled apart. You're not ordinary people. Well, I feel like it. Okay, that's right. You can feel like it. We're extraordinary people. There's my daughter and my son-in-law, Matt. They're, you're in church. Hi there, Aria. Aria. Ari. <laughs> Elliot. How are you guys? Acts 1-8. We're closing, by the way. Everybody said, it's about time. Thank you. It's really a familiar passage, but such a powerful and strong passage. And because we're his chosen ones, we are what God says here in Acts. It says, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you'll be witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Aren't you glad? He gives us an assignment to Jerusalem, which is where? Maui. Judea which is, could be all the islands, and Samaria was their enemy, so we've got to even bring the enemies into our lives so that we can love on them. 
And then we get to go out to all the world, but it's hard now, but it's still possible. But if you look at that word, we're going to be witnesses. It doesn't mean going out witnessing. The Greek word there is martyr. <laughs> so you thought witnessing was hard? <laughs> it's not hard. It's easy. Martyring means you're willing to die. Martyr means you're willing to lay your life down and die. Anybody want to invest in that stock today? It's 10 cents a share, but it's going to be a million dollars plus real soon as we practice it. Isn't that fun? Last thought from Mr. George McDonald, a friend of C.S. Lewis. Most of you know I like C.S. Lewis. I quote him often. I just couldn't. This is great. George McDonald says, man finds it hard to get what he wants because he does not want the best. God finds it hard to give because he would give the best and man will not take it. Church, are you wanting, waiting for his best? Are you wanting and desiring God's best? It's to understand you're a son, you're a daughter, you're called, you're chosen, you're blessed. He's making a difference in your life. We want to give ourselves a thousand percent to him. And then when he gives us his best, guess what? We're Mo better. Mo better in Jesus' name. So we're going to close with a little song from DNB, a Danub. It's a singing group made of one person. My name is Dwayne Neil Betzel, so I called it Danub. So this morning, it just wrapped right out of me. The enemy is battling our very core. But Jesus is teaching us to war. We're sons and daughters we can't ignore. We're waiting as he opens up our new door. Prayer and worship is our power source. Being still, listening, and obeying keeps us on course. We have freedom and liberty, which is a mighty force. Walk out of guilt, shame, condemnation without remorse. You all are becoming very whole. Whole. Captain. Ooh. Ho, ho, ho. You're all in mind, body, and soul, are you? You think you have, your suffering has taken a toll. He's renewing your mind to establish kingdom goals. You will receive power that will come upon you. No more fear. I love that just to say it just makes me feel good. No more fear. Joy and peace will make you new. You're a son and daughter. That is true. A new beginning in 20. 22. So if you're wondering what to take home, just wrap a little bit in the car or around the dinner table about what God is making you and allowing you to become. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. He desires for you to give him all the glory, to spend more time in silent prayer, talking prayer, praying for others. We just have to change the old family DNA and get the new family DNA in Jesus' name.